Welcome back to the absolute most professional StarCraft 2, the grand finals of the Korean StarCraft 2 League Summer Slam. And appropriately, I give you the rank 2 player in Korea, but rank 1, in my personal opinion, of StarCraft 2 Entertainment. It is, of course, the final boss. It is done. But, matching him, the best player in Korea, the number one Terran in the world, and I think the favorite in this match, it is the man, the myth, the Maru. A best of seven. Terran versus Zerd to cap off this season of the Korean StarCraft 2 League, a rematch of the Global StarCraft League where Maru took it four to two in one of the most dramatic and exciting matches I've ever seen. And if dramatic and exciting matches are something for you, well, it'd be awesome if you could like and subscribe. And Jimmy, Jimmy, what are we at? 1,124 likes, and you can save an overlord today. No, probably not. But you can at least try. Thank you for being here. Hopefully, you've had a good day so far. And hopefully, Dark versus Maru with Dark starting off with the Road Rush is about to make it a little bit better. Thank you for helping make the Korean StarCraft 2 League happen. A community league organized by Chicken Man and Dave Testa. And now kind of blooming with your support into not just a weekly tournament, but this big seasonal finals with thousands of dollars on the line, bringing out the best of the best. And Dark, well... Dark, one of my, uh, our most regular participants, especially of Zerg players, looking to make sure that Maru knows this is his stomping ground. And gonna stomp his way forward with plenty of roaches to kick things off. Though so Maru, no, of course, no not scouting. Psh, that's for plebs. As Maru already has a bunker at the front. Is he anticipating? The Roach Ravager all in. A bunker might not be enough, though. Circling without speed. Bunker on the high ground actually ends up surprising Dark a little bit. Without that Overlord, he doesn't have vision. The Overlord is actually kind of a key component because there is, of course, a ramp here. That's why a second Overlord is coming in, Dark. Not going to be stopped so easily. Not by you. Not by the Terrans. He will rule this map or see it burnt to ashes around. <clears throat> Gets through the supply depot. It's not much, but it's honest work. As he starts working on the bunker, no one is better than Dark. They're kind of taking odd situations and getting even. Amaru, a calm defense so far. He's getting another bunker. There's no other units in production right now as he gets a tech lab, I believe, for his star. Well, Stim? Really? Stim? Maru's supply blocked. The bunker's taking a lot of damage. Dark just calmly sitting on his front lawn, shelling him with corrosive bile. He's broken down that wall that Terrans are so fond of building nowadays. And, uh, is working his way through the rest. But the two bunkers seem to be enough here. Gonna get rid of that reactor. No more of that silliness. Maru not even bothering trying to repair. Technically, you can repair it there, but... Uh, unlikely to happen again. Fires off another volley. SCV Micro in order to minimize the damage. But Dark has taken a third base behind. Maru has not respect... Well, he's respected the attack, but he has not overestimated it. He realized that once the Ravagers start going for supply depots, they're probably not going to be getting anything too much more meaningful. And that means that Dark is kind of out of options and will have to retreat. In fact, a Viking will supply block. Maru going for three racks, delaying that third command center, of course, as, as Dark um, forced a, a bit more in the way of infrastructure with his Roach Ravager. Liberator's on the way, anticipating... Uh, I'm sorry. Spore Crawler on the way, potentially anticipating a Liberator. Overlords will have to wander back before they get popped like uh, floating tomatoes. And looks like we're going to pull back into something more macro-oriented. Maru will have access to Metavax and Stim, whereas Dark is only going to have a handful of roaches and some queens to deal with it. But that's more than enough 
for the final boss to make magic happen. 1-1 one, one begins for the Terran army. Despite this early, kind of in-your-face aggression, neither player is committed to some sort of all-in here. Duck perfectly happy to take any advantages, perceived or otherwise, and run with them. Road speed on the way. 1-1, one, one, not too far behind Maru. Dark up to 60 drones, adding on a couple more. So if he can get through this first medevac phase without taking too much economic damage, he will have the economy to potentially deny a third base indefinitely. Viking coming in. Anything to distract as the medevacs are on the edge of the main, but Dark already has creep spread throughout his main base. Spots the drop as it's happening. Corrosive Biles, optimistic at best. Medivacs will pick up. The Queen's going to take a few pot shots, but the knitting needle's barely scratching the paint on the medivacs. Maru realizes that Dark is well prepared. Very diligent about creep spreading throughout the main. Giving him vision where overlords could not because of that ambitious Viking. Maru's already got all his production online. He's going to have five racks ready to go. He's been building tanks. He's getting through a lot of the creep here. Setting up a staging area for follow-up attacks. So far, Dark, not particularly impressed by these medevacs, but unable to do anything directly about them. No infestation pit yet. So still reliant on just mass unit production. Combat shield done. 1-1 one, one finishing up. Armory seconds behind. Maru with the pinpoint upgrade timings. Assuming he starts him here. Plus one mech weapon. Gonna buff up those siege tanks. So helpful against the Roach Ravager. <clears throat> if there's any left when the Marines are done with it. Guns down two, three. Corrosive Biles get nothing. Shoots down four Ravagers. The Roach is shooting themselves in their own confusion. And Maru starting to grind his way through. A dozen Ravagers will replace it. Dark is going to try to smash. There is no infestation pit. There is no follow-up. There is no Hydra den. No Spire. There is only the Roach and the Ravager. Dark is at 114 army supply. You can see it on the minimap now coming together. Roaches and Ravagers filing in from all sides. Revengers assemble at the siege tanks for Maru. He pre-pulls the boys. He knows the threat. Gonna send the Marine. The boys will try to zone out for the tanks for now. So far, so good. Maru has to defend across the board. And more Roaches and Ravagers. Dark grinding his way through. The boys can't stop the corrosive bows. Two tanks down. But the Marines are trying to cleave through a group of Ravagers. But Dark not gonna give them a hard target. More Ravagers. No vision on the high ground. Another Stim takes down another tank. Down to one. Marines stimming forward. Catching a lot of the Ravagers here. But he lost 22 SCVs. And Dark is still rampaging. Another volley. Knocking out the tank. As he surgically dismantles with a sledgehammer of Roach Ravager. The Doctor here. Doctor. Dark. Still, Ravagers forcing the micro of the Marines. Maru more than happy to oblige. Not enough. Not a critical mass. As Maru abandons this fight and his third command center. He has the upgrades on the way. He didn't take game-ending damage. And the fact he still has these medevacs is a defining characteristic. He's going to have 2-2 done in those Marines. I was going to say Marauders, but it's just Marines right now are still looking very threatening. He has vision. Dark, able to fire over the top. The Roaches trade well enough with the Marines. Mauro can't seem to gain any ground here. He's only losing it. He lost the third. He evacuated over to the other side. Six o'clock now. He will land the orbital. Two tanks at a time, but Dark. Like, uh, Ravagers are a clunky unit for so many players, but Dark just makes them look like pirouetting elephants here. But infantry armor and weapons, level 2, for Maru. It's about as cost-effective as he's going to get, as Dark is on his way to the 2-2 upgrades himself. Corrosive Bell doesn't care too much about that. The Roach Ravager, Maru's gotta fight this. He's fighting with the Marines at the natural. He's fighting with the Marines at the third. 
Roach Ravager trying to come in. Doesn't quite have enough to take out the siege tank. It's going to be three tanks now. As Maru tries to box out. Minimal defense here. He just doesn't have that many units. Dark coming in for another round. Got to try to smash. The boys are pulled yet again. Marines dropping out mid fight. Dark on top of the tanks. The Roach Ravager being cut to pieces by the Marines. And Maru holds his ground. 20 SCVs down. But Maru does not falter. He holds yet again. But at what cost? Dark now has four fully operational hatcheries. He's got two two on the way. Maru has started his plus three, but his economy just keeps taking a hit. He pulls the SCVs. He lifts the orbital. He lifts the Marines into the metapacks. But it's not getting any easier. Very key here is that Dark does not have a, an infestation pit. He doesn't have the ability to go up to hive tech. He's going to be capped out with the two two. And now he's got to scramble back. Targets the Roach Worm. Another one going to be rebuilt immediately. But any interruption in the production is an opportunity for Maru to grind his way back into this game. Down goes another set of tanks. Almost gets two. Viking on the deck somehow survived throughout all this. But the Queens! No! Brenda's Revenge! Gets two medevacs on the way out. And just when it looked like Maru got a toe right back in. Oh, the Queens. We'll pull him under. Wow. Maru. He was making all the moves he needed to make. But then the queens just undercut any sort of mobility there. Losing medevacs with marines inside and the medevacs themselves. Maru once again at a massive supply deficit. Dark realizes that if he doesn't break him soon, that maybe he might have to go to hive tech this time around. But Dark is still in the driver's seat, and he will crash this car with no survivors. Here we go again. Roach Ravager coming in. Good concave for Dark, but not able to close the distance on the tanks immediately. They do have plus two done, but so does Dark. The supply evaporating, though, for Dark. For a moment, Maru took the advantage there. He's got plus three infantry weapons. Maru is so good at this. He's so good at taking these fights. It looks like there's so much Zerg, but the Marines somehow come out of the fire. 11 more SCVs down, but this hatchery. Dark actually dipping heavily on supply. The plus two tanks and plus three Marines doing a lot of damage. Maru's up here knowing this is his opportunity, but maybe it was just a dream. The tanks on the low ground. Dark did have to scramble to rebuild. I think Dark a little caught off guard by how poorly that went. That was a game-winning attack against anyone else. But now, Dark is uh, in an awkward spot defending the high ground. Caught between a rock and a hard place, dealing with those siege tanks on the low. The Queen's participating in the fight. Roach Ravager moving around. Is he just going to do a full counterattack? Is he going to go for the break? Looks like he goes for the break. The siege tanks. Good target fire. Big swaths of roaches here. Trying to get more, but Dark is able to collapse on three of the tanks. He has 80 drones right now, which means Maru's army supply is actually higher at the moment. He's able to take out the hatchery. Transfuse is not nearly enough. Another tank ripped to shreds. And Dark versus Maru will never fail to deliver. Welcome to the Korean StarCraft 2 League. I don't know what I expected, but somehow it's better. Dark versus Maru in the GSL was already one of the most exciting matches I've ever seen. And somehow this is shaping up to be even more dramatic. It's not over yet. Maru, who's been on the ropes, finally found a little bit of breathing room. We'll see what he does with it. Another tank picked it up. The Marines standing their ground. Mainling speed is finally done as Dark admits that Roach Ravager might not be the endgame army composition. He wants it. That Viking is still going. It has eight kills, though I don't know how many of those are on the ground. Racking up a tally. And again, Maru. Dark forced to cancel his hatchery. He's starting to mine out of his main. His natural. The third base is drying up as well. He doesn't have too many more. The Vipers. 
are consuming the evolution chambers. And these vipers are the one big tech swing that Dark may need to regain the momentum. But Maru, Marines, tanks, and medevacs. But, oh, here come the vipers revealed for the very first time. Parasitic bombs, blinding cloud, looking for more. Doesn't really get too much. Is that blinding cloud enough? It looks like no. Maru fans out, hits the stems, and holds his ground yet again. Banelings filing through. Minimal damage. Siege tanks. Another volley. More medevacs than marines left over. Dark still holding. Reinforcements on the way. The marine count is still too damn high. Eight or nine of them underneath. Another set of reinforcements. Roaches popping out, but Dark even supply is deadly. As Maru still holding and grinding through the Zerg. There's just, he can't put together the rally point. Maru refused to give up. Never gave up, never surrendered. And it looks like Dark who may have to do so. As roaches and ravagers just did not cut it. Uh, he lost so many tanks. 20 tanks lost, but 176 roaches slaughtered. This hatchery has been mining comfortably throughout, but it's about to get a lot more uncomfortable. And I think Maru's done it. He's turned it all the way around. What looked to be a dark victory instead is a decisive defeat at the meticulous hands of Maru. God, he's so good with those Marines. Plus two melee attack done. But dark down 50 supply. That's not gonna be enough. G. G. Maru takes it. What a game to open things up. Welcome to the Korean StarCraft 2 Summer Slam. Dark versus Maru. We are just getting started. Any, I, I, with confidence, I will say any other Terran player would have crumbled to name it pretty much any of those attacks, especially some of the later game ones. But Maru holds, and now Maru off to a one game lead. It's not much, but it's definitely something. Oh, settle in. If you're going to take a break, you're going to get your pizza rolls, your popcorns, um, your granola bars, uh, your ramen, what have you. Now's the time. All right. I know a lot of people check out the first game. They're like, oh, that's pretty good. I've seen enough. Hmm. Not here. Not today. I, I can never get enough of this. He's actually leaving space for an add on there. Honestly, that's another, the best sort of game. A game where the only mistakes, the only real mistakes, seem to be strategically. Like, Dark was quite confident. I could just stop right there, but... That the Roach Ravager would smash. And it looked like it would. And, in fact, Maru pulling 20-plus SCVs in each of those fights... Seems like such a costly investment, but dying is even costlier. So knowing exactly when to fight and when to pull back. It was just dark, underestimating the efficiency that Maru could fight with. God, he's so good at picking those battles. It's going to be Threeper, or Three Racks Reaper here, not just Threepers. Distinct difference. Threepers refers to the three Reaper opener. Three Racks Reaper is uh, the Threeper. No, 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 no. Anyways, um, much more dangerous because if Dark underestimates it, well, he's going to see the lack of command set, which is going to give some of this away. That means we need more Zerglings. Need to be a lot safer with the Queens. That means the third hatchery might end up going down. Just the fact that there's no add-ons at the natural yet. 
but Dark has an overload. He sees there's no expansion yet. And that is the defining characteristic here. Reaper is going to just cancel the hatch being used for its HP now. Overlord gets into the main, confirming what Dark already suspected. Cancels it at the last moment. So many lings on the way. Gonna try to catch the Reapers. Usually a futile endeavor, but see how it pans out for him. Zerglings get their metabolic boost. They're not so wings. That's just not enough Zerglings. He's got the little ledges there to work with. He gets one Reaper. But at what cost? There's so many more links. Dark looking for the surround. It's a costly fight here. Oh, uh, if he can just jam him up against the corner, he actually gets a couple. Dark not willing to let these Reapers go. A little bit of Zergling micro in there. Juking and jiving, ducking and dipping and diving. And most importantly, dodging. And then, if he whittles down the Reaper count enough, he can go for the Tech Lab and delay the stim. Big moves there. I won't be surprised. Just go for it. Yeah, yeah, let's go. He thought about it. Is it worth it to deal with the stim? Yeah. <laughs> go on out there, Billy. Are we getting hazard pay? Uh... <laughs> Talk to me if, <clears throat> when you come back. <laughs> of course, the add-on somewhat exposed on this side, but it's not like uh, there isn't a bandling nest. So Dark not going to try to capitalize quite yet on it. Behind it, he's handled this with uh, the calm, cool, collected, and divisive nature that we know and love. So there's a couple more Zerglings. And plenty of drones here for Dark. He just finds, like, Dark just finds a way. He gets so many drones. I don't know where he finds the larva. Under his couch cushions. Like, you had to go long enough to get plenty of larva there. But, um, like, under his bed. It's like, Mom, can you check? Is there a, is there a hatchery under my bed? Hmm. Oh, that's always a concerning situation. But... More Zerglings on the way, Maru, with straight-up marine timing here. As Medivac's still a long way off, pretty confident that he can get some damage done. I think he's underestimating Dark's willingness to build Zerglings. Dark may love his roaches, but the Zerglings uh, are not. He doesn't have anything against them either. One thing... I just want to touch on that last game again. One thing is how confident these players are in their own ability. Which, it, it, there's a fine line between cockiness and confidence. And there's a lot of blurred line there. But both of them, 100% confident that their attacks and their micro would carry them through. And it was just barely Maru. But that is the best StarCraft. Like, not, not second guessing, not questioning, not like poking and prodding. Like, no, I can do this. And that is what defines these two, I think. Is that confidence. That ability to decide on a fight and take it, essentially as it starts. And here's Maru, microwing back. Realizes, but he gets out and Brenda gets a medevac full of Marines. Dark is able to gun it down and spread the creep behind. That's a big win there. I'm not saying that it that the confidence necessarily translates to a victory in the fight but it gives you these incredibly close uh roller coaster fights that really do come down to pinpoint micro because you even getting that 10 percent extra dps uh stutter stepping forward instead of back is sometimes the difference all right he's backed up against the corner doesn't actually go for the Banes, but a few extra Zerglings drags him out. Opens up an opportunity for potentially this tank push.
Wait, are there two? Okay, the other siege tanks on the other side. I thought it was like jammed into the minerals there, but the fourth base under attack. Hatchery taking a lot of damage. Dark just gonna let it go. He's waiting for Baneling speed. Maru shows up like he owns the place, and right now he evicted the tenants, so. Burrow on the way, infestation pit done, hive begins immediately, hatchery rebuilt, siege tanks repositioned. And he's gonna get behind the hatch here. He might be jamming himself into a corner, but that at least covers one of his flanks. Oh, the banelings, but the siege tanks on the back line. Banelings get a lot of the marines. Zerglings will close the distance, rip apart the tanks. And, uh, I don't know, Maru, I think, expecting Dark to send those Banelings forward, but Dark recognized it and pulled the Banelings back as soon as Maru picked up and conserved a lot of them, meaning the tanks only got uh, Zergling kills, which is not much at all. Liberator. Honestly, I want to say a bit of a sign of desperation out of Maru. This is something you throw in just to keep them busy, because you know you can't really survive a counterattack. And it's gonna work for now. As Maru just now taken his third. It's been a very aggressive game. Quite late on landing that third, but the Queens again rip down an air unit, the knitting needles, puncturing it to death. Maru juggling in between these bases. But Dark actually has the upgrade advantage. He has 1-1 one, one versus just plus one infantry weapons. But 2 1 on the way. More tanks. Though one of them not being taken out by the Zerglings. Oh, big mistake out of Dark. He didn't commit to. Uh, he's actually canceling Larva at that base, giving up that base entirely. He didn't get either of those tanks. And those things can start to really help grind through. But looks like the Zerglings are coming in to rectify that mistake. Yeah. But it's just too much. Maru not able to reinforce that position. Loses more tanks. The Marines driven back. In the medevacs. Dark is on the chase. And Maru, what is he gonna do? The Banelings are already here. Ultralis Cavern on the way. The Zergs surround everything. The tanks are nothing. The SCVs will be evacuated. Those that aren't slaughtered. The third base. This is a bit of an awkward situation with the Vipers right here. And Dark takes it back. A decisive game to puts the final boss back on the map. One to what? <sighs> now, now, this is some good, st ah, some good games for the fans, indeed. By the way, the Korean StarCraft 2 League, once again, you can check the Patreon in the description after you like and subscribe. But this tournament is put on because the weekly tournament reached its goal of, I believe, $400 a week, something like that. They, uh, they said that the extra prize pool would go to a seasonal tournament like this one, like a, a larger tournament um, with a higher stakes. So those of you who supported made this happen, and that means we get to enjoy Game three and more. There will be more of Maru versus Dark. So thank you. All right. Altitude. Another game defined by confidence. Misplaced from Maru this time around. Trusting his siege tanks and marines to carry him through. But Dark adapted. He never... Well, honestly... Um, siege tanks much better against the Roach Ravager. Widowmine's a more popular option against the Ling Bane. The risk-reward ratio is usually... Uh, especially on larger maps... Uh, a better option. Yeah, d at least a higher potential... Uh, cost efficiency option, but siege tanks are always good if you can protect them But well about that
Threepers. The classical Threepers. What we know is the standard at this point. Just two racks. Dark hatch first. Reaper scout as well. I mean, I guess scouting and attacking with three reapers is a very similar scenario. Will we see any mech, any uh, battle cruisers in this series? I don't know. Maru seems very confident with that marine tank style. Have we even seen a marauder? I, I, in two games. Two relatively long macro games. Maybe the second game, not as long, but I don't think. Not only no Widow Mons. Or battle cruisers, or any of that. But even no marauders. Maybe one slipped in there in game one or something, but. Creep begins. Dark has taken that third. Overlord. Gonna be hunted by the barracks overlord, which is actually faster. Honestly, that's one of those that's one of those Twitch chat grandmaster strategies. Lifting a barracks just for scouting. The barracks only costs marginally more than an OV, and it flies faster. It has way more HP. Now well, you can't like ram it into it, but I'm saying it's a scouting tool. In the later game. Then again, Terran also has map hacks on command and sensor towers, so I guess it's a bit redundant. Third command center on the way. Add-ons being installed. Like we just downloaded a fresh uh, browser here. Reapers. More than a match for single-digit Zerglings. They'll join up with a few more. Can Dark get the catch here? Looks for the surround. Tries to catch up on the low ground and the high. Actually making sure there's nowhere to go. Nowhere to run. Nowhere to jump. And the Zerglings on the chase. We'll hunt down the Reapers. And get all of them! Get down here! Rips him down to the ground, and all three Reapers slaughtered by Dark's predatory Zerglings. Mmm, that's satisfying. Liberator, Stim. Dark. No Evo Chambers are lair yet. I think if we're gonna see a mass upgrade game, this will be it. He knows he's up against the bio style. It's almost guaranteed if you're up against the early Reaper build. So, he, he's already pumping out the drones. Has patrolling Zerglings looking for anything in the air, and he will actually spot the Liberator with a, with a Zergling. Um, I believe, yeah, he just saw it. <laughs> Layer on the way. He's got spores already producing. Yeah, he knows. Dark's ready. Did he just kill his own? Oh, his creep tumor was blocking the hatchery. Oh, my. Brad that! Wait, will the transfuse help? Yes. And the lip. God. He just gets the kills. Dark. With that killer instinct. He doesn't hesitate. That's the key. Like that queen, instead of retreating from the liberator circle, she just stood there and did her damage. And then the other queens came in just in time to stop the liberator from escaping. It's just these little details. This, this extra confidence. Starcraft is a game of seconds. Milliseconds, really. When it comes to real-time strategy, it definitely focuses on the real-time aspect. For better or worse. But definitely exciting to watch. Hatchery down. Cancelled, restarted. Creep. Respread. Bainling speed begins. Upgrades notably late compared to Maru here. As Dark 
triple hatchery production. Two out there just giving himself some alternatives. A macro hatch, a hydralis den as well. So it's going to be the classical Hydra Ling Bane Army. Medivax looking for an opportunity, but the Zergling is very well aware of their interests. SCV is repairing Hellions back at home. Dark up to 76 drones. He's adding more. Wait, are those just the same hatches from before? I think so. Maru going to really work those medevacs. A lot of Hellions. Maru setting up for a Hellbab push off to the left flank. Upgrades finishing up. And a lot of pressure. Yet, I don't know if any of this is going to be deadly once Baneling speed finishes. Now, Dark hasn't scouted the attack to the left flank. Some Widow Mines are being added in, dotting the field on the right. Only a handful of Banelings, but Baneling speed is just now completed. Dark is going to have to consolidate his forces. Banelings rolling in. The Hellbat's actually soaking so much of that damage. And that fire is absolutely encompassing everything it needs to, immolating the Zerglings. Widow Mine burrows, drags a lot of the Zerglings into it. Five drones down thus far. Maru tearing through everything right now, heating up the coldest map in the pool. And without 1-1 one, one done, Dark is really struggling to compete. The Hellbats providing the buffer on the front line and the Marines providing the DPS on the back. More drones gonna go down. Maru has a fourth command center on the way. Hydras are coming out, but a little bit too little and a little bit too late. As now Maru has distinctly the momentum. He already has an armory done. He can start his 2-2 nearly immediately. Uh, assuming that's his inclination here. Plus two weapons on the way. Widow Mines, down in the field. There are Hydras out now, makes it a little easier to deal with them. But really, the hardest part at this stage is going to be trading efficiently. Widow Mines connecting. Hydras, even more Zerglings. Banelings going down as well. More Mines coming up. Another set of Metavacs into the natural, and GG Maru takes the lead. Two to one. A solid game out of the best Terran in the world. And honestly, it kind of felt like Dark never really found his footing there. Maru just worked his way through everything. It, it, you can't even really point to anything that went particularly wrong. It's just it all went incredibly right for Maru. <laughs> As we go into Neo Humanity, our most lopsided game thus far. But uh, I don't think that trend will continue. As Neo Humanity is definitely... This is a map I've seen Dark do... Um, very creative things with. Also Dark reclaiming that very important red color here, which I'm not, I know they've switched colors throughout this match, uh, including that last part, but it seems like the red color does have an advantage, as we all know red is the faster color. Uh, so that might be factoring in here. Uh. Maru, balling off on the low ground. Is he really setting up? <laughs> wow. At some point, like, at some point, when do we start just walling off the third base? As Maru all the way out here, setting up so we can and have space for his add-ons without having to move his racks, leaving a vulnerable point. Because Dark is all about slipping those Zerglings in. Spawning pool on the way. It's going to be a two Rex. So far, found a lot of success with that. The only time the Reapers haven't worked is with that kind of all-in style that he used on Ancient Sister. Did Dark just scout this hard for Proxy Rex? Wow. Well, he's scouting and then he's going to go to... You know what? I really like this. Dark is checking his corners here. Doors and corners. That's how they get you. And Katerans have a lot of those, but um, the instead of just waiting until you have exactly the minerals, why not? Because if you send the drone out early, that lessens the chance it's going to be caught by a reaper. This is essentially a, almost a three hatch before pool here by Dark, but he just makes sure there is no proxy hatch going to make his life or proxy, sorry, 
uh, Freudian slip. Um, no proxy barracks going to make his life difficult. Reaper comes in. The classic making drones uncomfortable. Worker harassment. Well, it is a Blizzard game, but... Zerglings poking and prodding at the Reaper. No Zergling speed at all. By the way, no gas. Very important to point out. I completely glossed over it, but... And by glossed over it, I mean I didn't mention it at all. So very, very glossy in that case. Uh, but no gas whatsoever. Just a full gasless three hatch build. Dark feigning like he has any sort of real Zergling count. These Reapers gotta know. Yeah. Only brings up one. Almost loses it still. Brings up another, but the Queens... Going to provide some support for these shenanigans. Those Reapers not going to find any more here. Stim on the way. Grenade bounces the Queens forward. Starts the creep spread. Going to try to get a few more lanes with the uh, ring around the Reapers. Musical chairs micro here. Factory now, so we're gonna be going bio again. I, I have yet to really see anyone go from the Reaper opener into mech. As you already have two barracks, you already have Reapers. It seems the most natural thing in the world to go for the Marines. Not like Marines are a particularly um, mediocre unit. Some might argue the best in the entire game. I would probably be one of those as well. Especially in Maru's hands. All right, one of those queens has beef with the Overlord. It happens. Makes sense. Overlords can still fly. Queen's not happy about that. Not the Overlord's fault, but like... What are you gonna do? They can't fight back. Easy punching bag. Lair on the way. Quick lair out of death. That is... Quick lair after getting... It looks like... Nidus? Remember, this was off the gasless opener. 57 drones! He's gonna have 60 drones by 5 minutes. And count like... This is madness. Against a 3 per opener, which is supposed to kind of keep some basic control of the situation. Dark. Taking... Incredible liberties here. The fact that these Zerglings don't have speed should... Even if even if Maru doesn't know it's Roaches, he should know it's Roaches at this point. Those Zerglings should have speed. They should have their little uh, vestigial wings uh, by now. 1-1 one, one on the way for both sides. Almost identical timing. Combat shield for Maru filling in after Stim. He's got two medivacs popping out of the starport. Roach speed on the way. Starport gonna take a seat over to the side, I assume, for another barracks. Uh, to up his production as he gets the third, indeed. But the roaches are already on the way out. The creep has spread and will continue. Ah, snake. Reptile crate there. Roaches and Queens and without combat shield those Marines only three hits from the Roaches to get through Easy enough to deal with Marines still gonna almost a futile endeavor against the creep you gotta you gotta fight that battle though You gotta try Otherwise dark will just take the entire map He's already working on that center base Almost daring Maru to go for it the Rich Vespine. Rich Vespine just mines twice as fast. Doesn't have more gas, just allows you to mine it more efficiently. The Bone Trench. Neither side has worked on the rocks yet. Dark uh, getting through on either side here. We'll see if he drops the ones in the center and works on those as well. Bit of an archaeologist himself. Armory on the way. Plus one, plus one. Across the board.
Looks like Dark had a one second advantage on the upgrade. So we'll see who starts. Mamaru just a couple seconds behind on the armory for 2 2. Dark doesn't bother. Dark smash. It's time. Dark just. This is an old school Stefano style roach smash here. He went from no gas to all the gas. 70 drones and maxed out at seven and a half minutes with an infestation bit on the way, just in case. The medevacs head out. They're fakes. Not that they're going to do anything to stop Dark from coming in here. Here we go. Bunkers looking like a campaign mission, but much like a campaign mission, those bunkers are nothing in the face of the Zerg. Gets through the depots, make sure they can't do anything to really stall out uh, any additional pushes. Maru does have plenty of tanks here for now. 2-2 two, two on the way. I, so Dark learned from his arguable mistakes on Dragon Scales. He learned that even if it looks like you have enough to break through Maru, head your bets. And indeed he is. This time around, he is getting a hive, he's getting zerglings, he's getting a baneling nest, he's getting pathogen glands. He could probably smash Maru right now. But why take that risk? Why take a 70% uh, chance of success now when you can make it 90% later? And it's not like Maru is... It, uh, those numbers are definitely inflated. I'd, I'd, put, I'd call it more like 50 and 55 and 65 right now. As Dark has this full map control, but Maru can easily bring this back with some well-placed medevacs. But Dark, once again, is hedging his bets with the infestors on the way. Multiple hatcheries creep spread out across most of the map. He's still got a maxed out army with which to wield and box out all these medevacs. Oh no. Oh my god. Dark is the only player I've ever seen hit boosted medevacs with corrosive bile on a regular basis. Orbital manages to land. Maru gonna try to take a fourth. He's adding a fifth command center. He's got an opportunity. Viper's on the way, though. Hive tech about to kick in. Siege tanks. A solid line across the field. Hmm, roaches and langs. How many siege tanks? Nine. I love siege tanks. Probably my favorite Terran unit. Just want the Brood War sounds on them. I'm perfect. But here come the roaches and links. Bane link speed finishing mid-fight, but this angle is not gonna happen. Quite constricting here. He needs the vipers. God. He's not playing mech, but it's pretty damn close. With double-digit tanks on the field. Multiple factories pumping him out. Ghost Academy on the way. Our f four games in, we may see our very first ghosts. But there's still really nothing prompting them. There's no lurkers. Maybe for the Vipers and Infestors. Ravager shooting over the top here. Nothing to stop him. If the Corrosive Bow goes up, it comes down. You can't explain that. Dark looking to bite off the front here. Beautiful concave for the Zerg. As Maru tries to bust out of his base. He still has 185 supply. Dark, of course, 200. Greater Spire. Overlord Speed. Burrow. Nidus Network. Plus three. Carapace. And a new cop. Bone trench rocks. Knocked down. Cut off some potential flanks. But I'm sure that Dark won't let that stand for long. Four ghosts on the way as Maru reaches out for the center. One one or two one mech. Sorry, that plus two upgrade so huge. But here come the Vipers, blinding clouds on the tanks. Finds a third, opens up the back line. The Infestors, not even really participating, gets a couple fungals. Vipers are uh, Vikings on the field to try to deal with the Vipers. But Dark, well, he lost a lot of supply. He can replace it, and he may have broken this location here, right up the center. Let's take a look at the battle report. 
Yeah, pretty costly fight for Dark, but I think taking out five siege tanks and breaking that front location, very important. Forces of Medivac drop to deal with this. The Knight is at the back. The Viking's gonna help out. We got our first Marauders coming in as well, alongside those ghosts, as we get dragged into the later game here. Another round of ghosts. Not particularly... Uh, I mean, ghosts are always amazing. Okay, they can snipe any Zerg unit. But they are costly. And uh, a little unwieldy to control against the Lingbane Ravager. EMP is very important, but Dark usually solves the problem by making so many spellcasters you can't EMP them all. Oh, those rocks already taken down have given Dark a lot of maneuverability here. And just, oh, and the Zerglings head in towards the natural. Gets another siege tank. Might be able to get the orbital with Ravager's Banelings as well. One, two, three pronged attack here from Dark. Killing orbitals. Forced to lift off. Beautiful fungal on the ghosts. Killing ghosts right now. A volley of snipes. Gonna line up and knock down some Ravagers. But Dark forces one orbital to lift. Pretty much kills another. It will burn. And Dar burrowed some lings at the natural next to the Ghost Academy. Dark executes a three-pronged attack and knocks Maru back to 150 supply, whereas he has the money to remax out himself. Dark has his entire half the map and he's starting to work on Maru's. He's going full Zerg right now. It's a beauty to see. He plays such a Zerg style. Down goes another orbital! Metamax to Corrosive Bio! Siege tanks ripped apart! Nidus at the back, the SCVs! No, no, no! Those are the Zerg like they're inside the house! They called for support, but no one came! There was no one to save them. The siege tank, more siege tanks. This one saved barely. More painlings rolling in! Two of the SCVs, seven down so far, looking for another orbital. Neural Parasite on the way. He hasn't dealt with the Nidus yet. Another Nidus in the main. Another couple dozen Zerglings. Another couple dozen Banes. What's at the back? There are Burrowdlings everywhere. I'm pretty sure that siege tank is walled in. Maru, one of us. Yeah, that's definitely walled in. There is a Burrowed Infester providing vision for the Ravagers by sitting uh, underneath the siege tank. Dark, very... He has Neural Parasite on the way. He could EMP the ghosts. That may very well be the game-winning move. To EMP the ghosts. Neural Parasite into the ghosts. Does Dark see that? He sees the missile turret. He has Neural Parasite finishing. I, I think it's going to finish slightly after the missile turret. That's going to be anticlimactic. Well, here comes another attack. The Infester... Neural Parasite in one second, Infester dies. But so do all the tanks. Dark is not letting Maru stand. He will break him. I love watching Dark. I love watching a professional at work. It's so, it's so different than watching Cyril. Watching Cyril is like watching someone file, uh, like, paperless, like, e-file their taxes. Watching Dark is like... Watching a Mafia boss come and claim the... He EMPs the ghosts! I will, I'll do it again. Alright? And your kid's ghost, too, if you don't pay up, Maru. He's sniping ghosts! Are there no mules? He's kill Are there no scans? He's killed so many orbitals that he can't even scan. The Infestor will get away with it. There's a scan, but here comes Dark again. Just absolutely rolls the tanks. The ghosts will try to split, but where are you gonna go? There's nowhere left to run. The SCVs, 20 down. Dark will be wiped off the field as well. The ghosts and the Vikings survive. Dark lost so much, but Maru lost more. Oh my, Dark killed five ghosts. Wait, no, that's not surprising. Um, I don't know if it... Gets another, almost gets another EMP off. <laughs> More. <laughs> I had a bit of a mistake on that one. 
No, this is dangerous, actually. This is the best it's going to get for Mario for quite a bit. He's got an incredible army here. Despite all of Dark's uh, efforts, the, the economic hits he's been able to deal out. The Hell Chad's about to come online, plus three mech weapons. Maru still has one of the deadliest armies in the game. Ghosts, and also more ghosts. So. Dark has to uh, crush one more army. Using Bane Links to try to kill tanks. I think it was just an A move there. Infester underneath. Neural's a tank. I don't know if that's what he was aiming for, but... Another scan force. He dealt with a hatchery in the center. Dark is not even maxed out. A little concerning here. Maru has superior army supply. Not even plus three melee. Here comes Dark with some Banelings to, to work on the front line. Zerglings counterattacking. Another tank down. That's so many Zerglings. Death by a thousand Zergling claws. I, I, almost literally at this point. Oh no, Maru was looking the wrong way! Oh my god, he caught him at the perfect timing. It feels like Maru's eyes in the back of his head, but even he can't see all directions. And with the ghost melted, I don't know what's left. Well, whatever units are left, they're now darks. He's gonna borrow them. Throw some fungals in. Ghost dying. Infestor's already dead. Dark ties it up. Not intimidated there whatsoever. We got a series. Oh. <sighs> What a game out of dark. Once again, almost going too far. Almost letting Maru back into it just through his sheer um, excitement. That that bloodthirsty Zerg looking for more and more. The amount of orbitals killed by Zerglings or effectively killed by Zerglings is absurd. But it's also enough. As we go in to game five. And we're guaranteed at least two more. What a series. Somehow this is shaping up to be better than the GSL finals. Though Maru did win that 4-2. Dark had his moments of genius, but Dark is... But Maru is an orchestrator. Okay. Once he locks it down, it becomes so difficult. Especially in his stomping ground, Korea. It's gonna be the three pers again. He's, he's definitely been finding more success with that. I love Dark's kind of throwback build there. Back to the, the gasless Zerg. Into mass roaches. But not fully committing to the point where it was do or die. Oh my god, he's gonna do three racks again. Interesting. I mean, it's fun to watch Mar, but Dark is something else. Dark has played the most games of any professional Zerg this year, by the way. It is not just a, a meme. Up until, I believe the stats were... Two weeks ago or so before before this match. Um, for comparison, Dark had played 235 series against other top players. Just like top eight players. That's not even all players. That's like beyond a uh, hero. Like top eight uh, of each race. Not just, like, beating random plebs, like, what was his name? Sewer Badger. That cannon rushed him after complimenting him. While Dark was AFK on his phone. And then dealt with it. Anyways, that was a bonus game a few weeks ago, if you remember. So not Sewer Badger, but instead, top players played 230-something series, I think. Serral, for comparison. Uh, 40 or- 45 or 50. I think it's around 50. Maru, like 75. So it's not a fluke. It's not me going out of my way to find dark games. It's dark going out of his way to show dark game. Because he plays in everything. 
He is nearly matched by Beyond and Cure, but there is no Zerg player who plays in more tournaments than Dark Dust. Is it a bit of a Stockholm Syndrome? Maybe. Uh, being a Dark fan, but... I, honestly, it feels like he gets better. Dark was considered... Well, he's always been gray. Um, but... Huh. Like, we gotta comment on this. That was some lackluster Reaper Micro tomorrow. I don't know what he expected. He, he cancelled the third, and Dark's like... And I took offense to that. <laughs> that was... You... He lost two, I guess, for... Wait, what? He hasn't killed a Zerg? How do you not kill a Zerg? And now he's trying to cut him off from getting home. Dark's gonna bust him. He's gonna bust him. It's busting time. All right. What was I saying? Ghostbusters that last game. Bailing Busters this game. I, I'm distracting myself with busting, which, you know, happens. He hasn't even revealed the rest of the links here. It is up against the... I, I was talking about how Dark plays and everything. And it feels like he's gotten better throughout the year. There is that military service hanging over. It was kind of assumed that after the World Finals, earlier this year, in like February, that he would be doing his obligatory military service, but he's still busted to this day. He gets in. Maru does not have a wall. The only one he had. The Zerglings wrap around. The Bailings in the midst of everything. And Dark is inside the house. And soon, no one will be joining him. I... Is it enough? Oh, yeah. He's got plenty of Lings. The wall is not going back up. The, the Reapers are surrounded. The SCVs are being slaughtered. And Dark with a comfortable five-minute victory, just absolutely rips Maru to shreds and brings us to match point. It's so satisfying to see that actually work. I gotta say, a lot of Terran builds rely on being a half second away from actually fighting. Medivacs slurping up Marines, Reapers jumping off of cliffs at the last second. Uh, Hellions sliding behind mineral lines. Liberators two pixels out of reach. It's, um... It's good to see someone who so truly embraces the... Oh, he's doing something weird? Go fucking kill him. Strategy. And here, Dark. Very close to following entirely through on that. Match point. Three to two for the final boss in the finals, looking like a boss. I spent that almost that entire game on meta commentary while we saw the least meta all in be successful. Mentally, it feels like Maru on that Neo Humanity game feels like it turned a corner for him and not in a good way. That was, that was a lackadaisical, lackluster, lacking in general. A reaper, attempt at Threeper. Like Three Rags Reaper. I need to find a different name. Three Rags Reaper versus Threeper. Threeper is a specific opener. Three Rags Reaper is a different opener. Thrax. Uh, you don't have to have, just say Three Rags. It's, it's. 1.3 syllable. It's 2.3 syllables. It's three, three, three. No, stop. Stop. <laughs> Dark is going to try to finish it with a roach all in. Is it all in? It's another one of those heavy pressures where it could be all in if he wants it to be, but it doesn't have to be. He's going to have a second base. He only has one guess, so that means he's not fully uh, dependent on these roaches doing critical damage. But they also can't just die doing nothing, obviously. <laughs> Sees the hatchery timing. The Zerglings. 
Our Zerglings are waiting for something. Gonna try to get in, maybe delay a an add-on here. Oh my. He waits for the extra Reaper. He brings the Zerglings. Spots the add-ons. Here come the roaches. He, Maru has a lot of time to prepare here. Is he going to do the forward bunker play? Yeah. Because the bunker behind the barracks is just too hard, like, doesn't get the range you need. Ooh, be careful. Reaper's dancing back. Bunker delayed. It is. How many, how many roaches we got? Five roaches. Ten zerglings to follow it up. Dark. Looking to just break through here. With a couple ravagers. He's waiting for the gas. Starts a ravager immediately. But that one marauder is a big difference here. Zergling speed still a long way off. Dark building roaches. In order to, I mean, dark building zerglings because he wants the gas for ravagers here. But Maru is confidently kind of just pushing out. Oh, that Overlord. No, no, no. That needs to live. That. Oh, my God. I can't find the sweet spot. I... Oh, my... It had to find the, the exact spot right over those benches. Regulations. Honestly, at this point, it might as well... Yeah, he scans. Oh, my. That's how important that Ovi is. What do we have out here? No, just a Ovi hanging out. Secondary bunker on the back line. And I don't think the tech lab is going to make it. He's going to try to make it worth it with the marauders. The zerglings will be able to break through, but already this has been a difficult... It's one. There's nothing to heal, remember. He's not going to keep the stim. Restarts the tech lab just to make sure nothing breaks through. Engineering bay as a backup wall. Dark only has 17 drones, so he's decided this is all it. He needs to do significant, terrible, terrible damage. Especially now that Maru's actually killing some drones. The Reapers. Working their way through. So now, yeah, the time is of the essence. The Zerglings looking for the wraparound. And not finding a great... Ooh, corrosive bile's off the mark. The positioning here, the funnel for the Zerglings. He's killed some SCVs, but he's got to kill so many of them. There is no stim. He's going to try to wall this off. The SCV is not here. He actually gets into the main. The Zerglings inside the main. And the Ravager's at the front. I don't know how many more lings there are there. Going to try to break through. Does he have enough to actually fight? No, there's still enough Marine Marauder. So this attack has been kind of partitioned into bite-sized pieces here. And it looks like Dark is... No, he just taps it out. Wow. Okay. Maru brings one back. A, uh... A bit unceremoniously. But gets it nonetheless. All right, we're going to Game 7. Dark a bit hasty on those roaches. Taste victory. Something he doesn't very often in these long series against Maru. Maru is just the master of best of sevens. He might have the best record outside of Cyril um, in best of seven, which are almost exclusively major tournament finals. So, but for the first time in quite a while, we will see game seven. One more time. In the bottom right, it is the final boss. Duck. And on the other side, joining him, it is Maru, the best Terran in the history of StarCraft II. Ten-year career. Over 10 years now. 13 years is a lot over 10 years, actually. Believe it or not. Maru first appearing in GSL when he was 13 years old. And uh, now he's a little older than that. 
I have it on good authority. Game seven will be Babylon. We see the entire map pool. This time only a single Rex on the low ground here. Three hatch, no gas. Inter like against someone who's going one racks expand. Oh god, this is gonna stack up so well for dark. So it's a bit risky to do this against Reapers, as you only have queens and slowlings, which can easily spiral out of control, especially if they do the uh, three racks Reaper, as opposed to just the uh, macro Reaper opener. But against just Marines. Against the one racks expand economically, Dark has free reign for quite a while. There's two racks behind it. It's going to be a mass bioplay, which is going to be scouted. He's so he was he was like one pixel. If that Overlord had wandered just a moment further, would have seen it. But the fact that there are Marines here, the fact that there's going to be a reactor barracks at the Nat. May give away enough. Wow, a four racks timing. Out of Maru. Up against Dark, who is doing essentially the greediest macro Zerg build. But, because Dark went for the gasless here, means he gets his three bases up and running so fast. So furious. Mostly fast, though. That, uh... He should. Well, it depends on when he takes the gas. Because you can't fight Mass Marine with just Queens. I say you can't, but, like, it's dark, so. Uh, he's taking one. Just one. It's a very tense split of builds. Neither player knows it yet, for sure, but I think they both have an idea. Game seven. Like, we've seen the full spread here. Full macro games, early cheeses. We've only seen one particularly ultra late game, and no ultras It's that late game. A Roach Warren is on the way. It's stacking up at a pretty solid timing against the, the Stim Marine Combat Shield. Bunker is salvaged. Dark is a bit supply blocked here, actually. Oh no, oh no. He's he's actually got just started the OVs. Which means he's gonna have to wait until they, that's how it works, right? Like, nah. He has to wait until they finish in order to start building anything. And that's gonna delay the roaches a bit longer. But Creep is already spreading out. Overlord spotted. He's gonna try to, to... He's circumventing Dark's vision with those Marines. But Dark is patrolling Zerglings. Suspicious here. Building a handful of roaches. Wait, did he get the Zergling? He did. More roaches on the way. He knows now. Dark mustering the Queens! But it's just roaches. There's not that many of them. Maru is almost all in here. He doesn't have a third command center. He doesn't have medevacs. He needs to get the damage done. He's working on the creep. Up to the natural. Hits the stims. Targets a queen. Gets a roach. The transfusers are helping to hold. But this is a lot of marines. He's slowed this down significantly. Exhausted most of the stim. Dark can afford to lose a few drones if it means crushing this attack. The drones are on the run. They'll actually box in the marines here. And Dark pulled out of the full economic greed into the roaches just in time. That patrol of the Zerglings. Maru did a good job of circumventing the overlords, but it's almost impossible to circumvent the Lings. 
Dark maintains over 60 drones, gets a fourth base, and has a lair done all before Maru's third and Metavax. It's looking very good for the final boss here. Now, as we learned at the start of this series, just because Maru is, is in a rough situation, just because he's on defense and only can move out with medevacs and marines. That doesn't mean he's not dangerous. All right. Dark underestimating Maru is how this series started. It's part of how we got to 3-3. So now he's playing it very careful. He's got 1-1 one, one on the way, infestation pit, multiple hatcheries, macro hatch, outside hatch. Hatcheries are like cats. You have outside and inside hatches. Different purposes, different temperaments. You know how it is. Dark. Hive on the way. Infestation pit. 69 drones. Creep spread looking good. Maru. Feels like Dark has adapted to Maru. Even though Maru's still so incredibly dangerous. But Dark is making it so he can't micro his way. It, like, physically cannot micro his way out of these situations. He's doing that by getting to Hive Tech and, and such an economy that even if Maru wins a fight with twice the cost efficiency, it's not enough. True Zerg. Roaches find the marines. Marines find the roaches. Happy to see them. There is an infester. I don't think he wants to reveal it quite yet. Even one of one good fungal here could end the series for Mara. Hive is scouted. You just scan the main. You'll even see when it finishes conveniently. One one is done. For dark here. Already started plus two carapace. Fungal. Another one chained together, those marines. No survivor. <laughs> one to tell the story. Cleans up a drop. Maru pushes out because sitting back. Oh my god, he's like, I gotta do something with this guy. Big Gabe over here. So Maru with a tenuous position, but still plenty of army supply. Does he have an armory? He does not. He's effectively all in on 1-1. One, one. But he's got a whole lot of marines and tanks. And he's worked with less before. Dark is giving up his fourth in order to hold on for a better position. He knows if vipers are out, he can get plus two, plus two. He understands the scenario. Maru, Maru does not have that 10 CC economy. Oh no, the Viper came out the worst possible hatch. Gun down immediately. That's a big win for Maru there. Only one more. Ricky! The accidental swarm host has joined us in the production tab. But Maru sets up. Mainlings rolling in, but hitting the siege tanks. The concave of marines is incredible. And they will chase the Banelings back. Adrenal glands not done. Maru's army supply looking good. Stimming back. Splits are amazing, and Maru is turning it around the fungals. He could have used those with the veins. Dark has to retreat from another base. It's getting really tight. Somehow, Dark underestimated Maru again. Ricky's out, though, and with that morale boost, the Zerg army might be able to turn things around. More importantly, the Vipers, but you know what? Everybody's participating. The Locust dropped down. Blinding cloud. Two great blinding clouds here. Negate the siege techs. The marines will drop out and try to hold a line of sorts here. Reinforcements on the way. Maru supply dipping, but it's still just a roach leg. Plus two carapace is done though. Makes it that much harder to grind through the biomass. Dark, only 67 drones. Maru putting up a dramatic fight. And it is a tenuous timing here. There's so many medevacs. Maru has 11 of them with only 31 marines. 
The medevacs in flight. Honestly, probably not worth it to risk all of them here, but you know, it'd be nice if all of those were full of marines, but I think Dark is not convinced. Oh my god, this is, yeah, this, he sees the vipers, he's like, actually, yes, this was a horrible idea. Ultralisk Cavern, Dark. Looking to, uh, potentially close this out. Maru is lifting his mane in Terran versus Zerk. Ooh. Chitin is plating on the way. Marauders being added in. I don't know if he saw the Ultra Cavern or at this stage if it's somewhat implied. As adding the Marauders in to deal with Hive Tech. Tried and true strategy. Not as good as ghosts in many scenarios, but a lot easier to get to. And also they have Tech Labs already slapped on. So that means a transition to ghosts is plausible. Another base taken out. The Baneling Nest and the Infestation Pit vulnerable. Kind of a big deal here. He already has another Baneling Nest. Of course he does. He's making another Baneling Nest, just in case, out of reflex. Which, you know, I get that. <laughs> you saw your Baneling Nest dying. You, gotta, you can never be too careful. Even though he had that same reflex before. It's not like it's the costliest thing. Ultras. Infestors, Vipers, near full energy across the board. Not a single ghost to contest them. And by the way, Maru is still sitting on 1-1 one, one upgrades. Oh, the Terran army is being routed. He sieges up in a blinding cloud. Verglings, bailing, roaches, oh my. And Maru has nothing left. Dark jumps him on the field and rips him to shreds even before the Ultras can participate. Oh no, just was not ready. Maru on the back foot for most of this game, and then Dark just rips him out from under him. Just a beautiful fight to clean it up. The Ultra there in the back. Did Ricky survive? He did. Ricky survived. 100% win rate against Maru with Ricky on the... Oh my god! <laughs> he was using him. To try to harass. You gotta get, like, Dark. The final boss has brought down the greatest Terran in the world. It wasn't easy. But it was well deserved. An incredible series out of Dark. A great one out of Maru. But today, it wasn't enough. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you to the Korean StarCraft 2 League for putting on a great Summer Slam event. Hopefully you guys enjoyed and check out uh, and support them. And if you enjoy and you have the means of motivation, check out Patreon, YouTube membership, or like and subscribe. Thank you for watching. I hope I made your day a little bit better. Final boss looking better than ever. I'll see you next time. Good luck. Have fun. Stay chill.